Today's guest grew up relatively poor before going on to becoming an award-winning singer, songwriter, and entrepreneur. In his new book, Sing Your Name Out Loud, 15 Rules for Living Your Dream, he shows us exactly how he did it. I'm Rosemary Miller here with Jason Derulo. Thank you so much for joining me today, Jason. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So when I read this book, the first thing I thought about was one, yeah. I'm not working hard enough. <laughs> Two, I'm not posting enough on social media. Mm. And three, are my actions actually taking me in the direction that I need to be going into to fulfill my dreams? Mm. So Jason, what higher heights have you reached in your career to make you feel that you were the one who should put out this sort of blueprint to success? I think it's really interesting, actually. Uh, I don't know that there's another musician that's ever done a uh, self-help book, if you will. Um, so for me, I'm somebody who has worked with all kinds of people, you know, from people that are just starting out to uh, the largest uh, people in the world, you know, in terms of f fame and notoriety. Um, and I always love uh, reaching out and, and helping different uh, creators and of all kinds, right? Like. Uh, when it comes to social media, when it comes to music, from producers to writers to all kinds of people. You don't necessarily have to be um, the person that has all of these hits for me to want to come and work with you. So I've seen dreamers of all kinds. And I've seen a lot of dreamers kind of put their dream aside because of what their parents have told them or them feeling like they need to go in a direction, go to grad school, and like that is the only route, you know, to be a success. Um, also seen a lot of older folks that think that it's too late, you know, and their dreams have already passed them. So I wanted to write this book because I've went through a lot of high highs, a lot of low lows, and I've bumped my head a million times, and I wanted to give somebody some inspiration based on my experiences. I've lived a very, um, very crazy life, I think. Um, and I was able to kind of pick my life apart and figure out the times where I made like the largest leaps and what I was doing during those time periods and what made those time periods different to other time periods. Um, and in doing that, I was able to wheedle down the 15 things that I felt like were the most effective uh, things that I did uh, to get me to where I am today. I also utilized those things in other places in my life. You know, utilized it in social media, and social media began to thrive and, and go crazy. Utilized those same uh, tidbits, and business started to go crazy. Um, so these rules apply everywhere. They're not just for, for someone who is a creative, but any dreamer of all kinds. Um, and it is uh, these things that I believe um, th that are very simply put that will change uh, people's lives, I think. Well, Jason, you've had the success, and I imagine you have the money that comes with it. Can you tell mm -hmm. us what's been your most profitable year yet? Um, it seems like every year, the next year is my most profitable year. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know that it's a, it's a result other, other than kind of just compounding, right? So uh, I learn more, of course, and I, I just become more successful by the things that I learn. But also uh, having money, the more money that you have, the more money that you're able to create based on the things that you already have. Um, so I've had a lot of failed businesses, but I've had uh, businesses thrive, and the businesses that thr end up thriving, uh, you know, mitigate all of the failures. So how many sources of income do you have? Thirteen, maybe. What's the highest? The highest of, of today <laughs> is a very unsexy business, um, uh, if you will, but it is a monster. It's... Uh, it's called a rocket car wash, and um, rocket car washes is, is basically changing the way that um, people get their cars washed. So it's a, an amazing facility. You know, you go in and you pay a membership, and you can get your car washed at any time. You know, it's kind of like the 
it's like the Spotify motto and how Spotify changed the music industry. It's like Netflix and how Netflix changed, you know, the, the film industry. Um, people want things that are, are recurring and that they can, you know, do anytime they want. So, like, I don't have to go in to Blockbuster and go rent a movie anymore because it's right at the comfort of my own home. And I can do it at any time at a click of a button. Same thing, same things for, uh, for car washing and anything, I think, nowadays. The more simple that you make it for people, the more... Um, uh, the cheaper that it is, obviously, is, is just more beneficial for people. If I can get my car washed at any time um, for a very low, low price, I mean, it's, it beats uh, any other <laughs> car wash uh, out there, especially it being better than the other ones as well. So is this the business you mentioned in your book that's valued at $2 billion? Yes. <sighs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Absolutely. So... I found a very interesting part in your book about why you decided to choose pop over R&B. And uh -huh. you said, I didn't choose which genre I love the most or which one came the most naturally to me. I chose the genre that the greatest number of people listen to because I wanted to be the biggest artist in the world. Mm -hmm. Jason, how has being a pop star influenced your career, especially as a black man? So um, I debated on whether I wanted to put this in the book uh, because it's not the pop star thing to say, right? It's not the musician thing to say to be like, I chose this because of numbers, you know? Um, but it is the music business. Uh, and I thought it was important for me to be transparent all the way through and not, ha and not leave things out um, because I make music and I want to sell more records. You know, I wanted to lay it all on, on the line so that people had all of the information so that people can actually be inspired and, and move forward as informative, as, the, as, as informed as they could possibly be. Um, so with, with numbers being uh, king and numbers playing a huge part of why I made the kind of music that I did, um, that came from um, my manager at the time. His name was Frank Harris, and he basically laid it out all out on a piece of uh, on a table for me. So like he had all the charts from all these different countries, and uh, different genres, and how much those uh, different genres were selling. So he had all the numbers laid out for me, and he was like, "This genre makes this kind of music, and and if you look at the this German chart, you don't see any da da da." -da. So he laid down every single country around the world. Um, and I thought it was so interesting. And I, I, I was really shocked by, by the numbers. Um, so much so that I decided to do a specific kind of music, even though it was kind of the impossible uh, dream, right? Because there hasn't been a musician to start off pop ever. They, uh, a black musician to start off pop. They always uh, start with urban and then, and then you know, kind of cross over is the word. Um, so I was like, well, why can't it be me? Like, why can't I be the first? Cool. So that, that's what I set my sights on. I wanted to do the music that I felt like would give me the largest reach internationally so that I can share my music with everybody. Hmm. Do you feel like you have diehard fans because you don't really have that urban fan base? Um, yeah. Of course. Um, I mean, when, I mean, I've sold 250 million records across the world. You know, I'm one of six artists uh, that have had a number one in in, uh, in three different um, decades. Um, one of uh, five male artists who has who has had a number one in the UK uh, in three different decades. So that's America. That's the UK. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Um, it's not because of me, it's because of the fans, obviously, and uh, what I've been able to, to, to create. You know, hopefully, um, what I've done thus far has inspired you know, many fans out there. But again, the, the numbers just don't lie. So, what you've done thus far, I remember you mentioned in your book about mm -hmm. auto-tune. Mm -hmm. Point blank, does Jason Derulo still use auto-tune in his songs, yes or no? Oh yeah, so um, so autotune is is a norm. It's uh, so music has really shifted uh, from uh, the days before autotune and the days after, and people's pe people's ear hears uh, music very different now than they did before. So when you hear a song now, if it's 
imperfect in any way, <laughs> people's ear he hears it. So you can't be slightly off tune. So if you listen to like songs in, in the 90s, um, in, even the early 2000s, your ear kind of hears it a little different and like toots up. It's like, was that flat? Like, was that? Like, we, 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 we can't hear that anymore. Like, everything has become so perfect. So every, every note needs to be pitch perfect in 2023. Um, and sometimes I'll utilize uh, Melodyne. Sometimes I'll utilize Autotune. But every single song that you hear on the radio has Autotune on it. So do you fear that AI... Or Melodyne. You fear that AI may take your job one day? I, I don't, because AI doesn't have uh, emotion. Um, I think AI is... AI, it, where it is right now, is still powered by somebody. So, like, when you hear, like, the, the Drake versions that come out, it's still somebody that writes those verses, right? And they, they're speaking those verses, and then they make it sound like Drake. But it's still somebody writing that awesome verse, you know? So it's somebody still that's talented that's making, making it. But when AI starts to, to write verses that are good, then we got to worry. But right now, AI is not really writing good verses, you don't feel that you should be worried in the next two to five years, if that I don't, long? I don't, I don't think so. Because I, 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 I don't think that emotion has been nailed by, by AI or anything close to it. Okay. So let's yeah. switch gears a little bit to TikTok. Mm -hmm. We know you love TikTok. <laughs> yeah. And before we get too deep in that, so you had that video with the corn on the drill. Yeah. Did you really break your teeth? Maybe. Jason, <laughs> did you break your teeth? Maybe. I mean... You know, it was, a, it was a tough time. It was a tough time. <laughs> Let me see. Let me look at your two front teeth. Do they look? I don't know. They look real. You have these are your real teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Jason did not break his teeth. Okay, <laughs> we settled that. So, social media. You, I realized you didn't mention Twitter. You honed in on TikTok. You love it. You can go viral, but you mm. didn't mention Twitter. Why is that? Is Twitter not relevant? Um, Twitter was uh, really relevant for me for crypto, and that that's pretty much as far as it went for me for Twitter. Uh, Twitter uh, seems to be a really like negative place. Um, I think I gravitated to TikTok because at that time it was really positive. I think it's, <laughs> it's now, you know, it's, it's you know hit some some negative spaces now. Um, but I really gravitated to it because it, it seemed way, way more positive, uplifting, and people were just like doing um, things that they love, you know, and I, I think that's a beautiful thing. Twitter, like you type your feelings. I mean, it's like, you know, wake up in the morning, like, this is how I feel today. It's just not really, it's not organic to me. So TikTok, I'm sure you've seen in the news that it could potentially be banned. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I would find it very... I mean, it would be really difficult to, to, to make that happen, I think. Um, there's so many people that, that love it and are on it um, so often. Uh, and then I think if you ban uh, Twitter, I mean, if you ban TikTok, then you're going to have to start to look at all of these other sites as well. And not just social media, but um, uh, a lot of the apps that we have on our phones utilize some of the same information and the same things that we're doing on TikTok. They utilize the same kind of thing. So I think it's gonna be, it would be literally like a, a snowball effect and you're just going to have to start looking at so many other uh, apps. So back to TikTok and how easy it is to go viral. You've mm -hmm. even mentioned your dog, Ice, has mm -hmm. gone viral. Yeah. I'm curious. Ice lives with Jenna, your uh -huh. ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Could you explain why your dog lives with your ex-girlfriend? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I do take ice uh, sometimes, um, but uh, ice, ice is with a uh, king the majority of the time. He's with my son the majority of the time. So um, I'll take ice sometimes, um, but like when I'm on the road and stuff, I like, I like king to have ice uh, with him. You, you like know? king to have Jenna there too on the road because she's on all the trips. Uh, she comes out sometimes as well. So we, we do, a, I think, a really, really, well, we try to do the best we can co-parenting. Um, and it's a beautiful thing, you know, when, when we're able to all kind of uh, be together and he can have his mo mom and his dad there at the same time. You know, I think um, 
rules are, are made to be broken. And I think, you know, a lot of people are confused by it, but uh, we're both his parents, you know, and these are awesome moments. So I would love for him to enjoy these moments with, with his parents if he can. We need a book on co-parenting next. That's what <laughs> <Facts>. we need. <laughs> but Facts. would you ever rekindle that flame with her? Uh, I mean, who, who knows, you know? Who yeah. knows? So back to the music industry, Jason. Mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg recently said in an interview, I don't know who the F is running the streaming industry, but you need to give us some information on how to effing track this money down. Jason, mm -hmm. how can you effing track that money down? <laughs> um, it's, it's difficult. You know, there, I mean, there's obviously uh, companies that do it for us, but I mean, I, I think it's far from perfect. And yeah, I don't know, you know, I mean, hopefully with time, we're, we can figure this whole thing out. But, you know, everybody, everybody's, everybody's a crook of some sort. You know, you just have to tr try to figure out the, the lesser evil. Um, but in the in the streaming world, it's just so new, you know, and uh, hopefully we can figure this out. I mean, pretty soon, because I mean, it, it is it is a flawed, flawed system for sure. OK, so back to your 15 rules for living your dream. What other mm -hmm. artists do you think are implementing these 15 rules? <laughs> Truthfully, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. Uh, I think Beyonce for sure. Um, Beyonce is also a Virgo, as, as well as me. Um, <laughs> I think Beyonce is, you know, as, as hard a worker as you can find, um, still to today. And um, I, have, I have somebody asked me today, what was the hardest rule to uh, follow? And I thought that was, you know, such a cool question. Um, so I looked at, you know, the chapters to try to like really answer that question uh, to the best of my ability, and I and I come up with the answer that success is for rent, which is one of the rules, um, it's num rule number four. That was the hardest because that still holds true today, right? Success is for rent. You know, you never own it, right? It can, it can go away tomorrow. Uh, and th as hard as I worked when I was a kid, it is as hard as I work now. So it's ne there's never a destination, right? It's never like, I have arrived. Now I could chill, now I could relax. No. Um, what you don't, what doesn't grow dies, right? And if you don't keep feeding the beast, you know, you, f you will fall at the wayside. And uh, we've seen it time and time again where people, you know, have this amazing trajectory and then, um, and then nothing. Um, in, 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 all, in all areas, right? And it's not just entertainment, but all areas. If you're, not, if you're not feeding the beast constantly and you're not having that same drive and that same hunger that you had in the beginning, because it's, e it's easier to be uh, hardworking when you're hungry, right? When, when you're hungry and you don't know where your next meal is, it's like, I, like, I, like I need to work so I can you know, get some food or like, so that I can be comfortable. But if you're already comfortable, it's way more difficult to have that same work ethic because at that point, it's like, why? I already have everything. But um, as soon as you do that, just know that <laughs> it's going to start going the other way. Do Success you, is for it. Do you still see yourself as that little boy running from poverty? Oh, absolutely. I, I don't think that that will ever leave me in, in particular. I think, you know, it does leave a lot of people. But for me, I'm, I'm obsessed, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's different for me. You know, I guess working towards something, uh, building things are, are my obsession. You know, I love creating things from nothing and watching them grow and flourish. And uh, I will say that the book is, is not necessarily for the faint of heart, you know, because it's not, it's not a cheat code, right? It's not a magic pill. Um, so in reading the book uh, and applying it, it's going to take some real commitment. It's going to take some real uh, time. And if you're not willing to put in the, the, the effort and the work that goes behind the rules, um, it's a pointless, it's a pointless buy. So it's for somebody that really, really wants it, you know, not somebody that is kind of half doing it, you know, half one foot in, one foot out. It's for someone that really um, wants this more than anything. Are you happy? 
Am I happy? Are you happy? Oh my goodness, I, I couldn't be happier. Um, I have a, a, a wonderful family. I have uh, my, uh, my professional career. I have flourishing businesses. Um, I'm happy in the work that I've, that I've created for myself, right? It's, it's a happy thing to do what you love every single day. It's my favorite thing to do literally to um, turn the lights low, create a song, you know, it's literally my favorite thing to do in the world. So that makes me really happy. It makes me really happy when I get to spend time with my son. It also makes me really happy when my businesses start to, start to do well, especially when they start from nothing. And, um, you know, you always have naysayers, right? Um, and I've had a lot of naysayers uh, for, the, for the kinds of businesses that I decided to do. So it's amazing to see them start to flourish and, 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 and you know, just build, you know, it's a crazy thing to watch. I asked that question because I've seen successful people, very successful people, mm -hmm. just end it all. They have it all, they've gotten everything they've ever wanted, but yeah. they ended it all. Which is why I really want to know, Jason, if you were happy. Yeah, I mean, you see that way too often, and I think um, that, pr that probably comes from a place of not having purpose anymore. You know, I think th those people, like, lose, lose the sense of purpose. Uh, you see that a lot with kids, uh, rich kids. You know, they ha were handed a lot of things within their lives, so it's hard to find the purpose for themselves. You know, and I think that in itself is is the most important thing within life is to find what your purpose is and what makes you happy and you have to chase that like whatever that is like that's that's another reason that i decided to do this book because i am genuinely happy and i want that for everybody you know and it, and i've had you know all of all of the money and and all of the things but the things don't make you happy you know it is it is the um, I mean, it's for everybody, it's something different. But for me, it is my passion, which is, which is music and creation and entertainment. That's what genuinely makes me happy. And the fact that I can do that as my job is why I have a happy life, you know? Um, if I didn't have that, um, I wouldn't be nearly as, as happy as I am. Well, you found your purpose at four-year-olds. What advice do you have for someone who's looking for it at 40? Um, it's never too late. Uh, I have just started my my adventure with with business. You know, um, I'm I'm 33 years old. I'm just starting just starting that. You know, back in the day, I would just uh, invest in people's companies that were like coming up and be like, oh yeah, I'll invest in that. Da 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 da. Um, but in my 30s is when I I started my adventure creating businesses and. Um, it's just, it's never too late. I, f I feel like my, my journey has just started and it's, and it's not just now flourishing, right? Um, so you can't listen to, to the outside noise, you know, because there, there's no rules, especially in the day and age that we live in with social media. Um, I've watched people's lives uh, transform from, you know, the young kids to, to the, the elder adults, you know, just by posting things on social media, things, things change, you know, with, with you putting the right effort, the right time, taking the right steps, you know, um, literally anything is possible at any age. And they'll be able to go toe to toe with the best person on the planet. <laughs> Have to. That's the goal. Who's that person for you? Um, I mean, it depends on what sector, right? So uh, within, within business, there's somebody different than within music, you know, there's somebody music. different. Music, um, definitely Michael Jackson. You know, that was always what was in the back of my mind. I, you know, you gotta be as delusional as, 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 as they come, mm -hmm. you know, because I think the problem is when you're growing up and say, for instance, you wanna play basketball, and you're playing against all the kids around you and you're like, oh yeah, I'm really good. I'm whooping all these guys, I'm good. The problem is none of those kids are probably going to the NBA. So that's not your competition. You need to look at who the competition is at the top. That's your competition. You know, it's, it's, not, the, it's not everybody that's around you. You need to look, you need to dream bigger. You gotta, you, you gotta aim for the top. Um, and if you fall short, that's still a beautiful thing as well. But we're not focused on falling short. We're focused on 
what the actual prize is. What the actual prize is. Mm -hmm. Well, Jason, what's next for Jason Derulo, the man, and Jason Derulo, the artist? Um, I have uh, some, some really cool music that I just released. Um, uh, really excited uh, about these the, these three different songs. I'm glad you came, slow low, and um, when love sucks. Um, a long form album is finally coming in October, uh, and it it's it's really a special project because I was trying to figure out what I could do to bring people back to the album party. You know, and I knew something had to be really, really crazy different uh, to bring people back because everybody's like, like one and done. It's like, you know, this song, this song, this song, put my playlist together. Um, so I came up with um, a audio film that is going to go hand in hand uh, with my album. And I couldn't be more excited. I have some, some of the best people working on this project with me, and it's been an absolute dream uh, working with, uh, you know, a ton of these actors. Uh, as well as uh, the producers of, of Twilight are producing it, um, as well as some amazing musicians. You know, I always work with, with really fantastic musicians, but um, this project is something that I feel like will change the way that uh, we, we listen to albums. Mm. I couldn't be more excited. Are you sure you couldn't be more excited? <laughs> <laughs> I, literally could, I literally couldn't be more excited about this thing. Thank you for doing this interview with me, Jason. My pleasure.